The human brain. Perhaps the last great mystery that we possess. It's made up of billions and trillions of neurons that are able to do complex tasks and make those complex tasks seem almost easy. Were I to ask you, for example, to identify which animals in this video are cats and which animals are dogs, you would have no trouble at all distinguishing between the two. You are an incredible, incredible machine. To achieve that task takes something special. Deep learning is the process in which we try to recreate that incredible spark in the human brain in a computer. And deep learning allows for us to teach computers to learn. Now, while a lot of the terminology of deep learning is rooted in neurological terminology, it's important to remember that the way a computer learns is fundamentally different from the way the brain learns. In this video, you are going to receive a quick introduction to deep learning and the key terminology and concepts behind it, so that in future videos we can explore these concepts and terms in more depth. Deep learning is achieved through the creation and implementation of, among other things, neural networks. Neural networks are artificial recreations of what occurs in the brain through mathematics and algorithms. In other words, it is not neurological at all, and it's entirely different from the neurological process that happens inside the brain. Nevertheless, the goal is to imitate that process through mathematics. So how is this achieved? Well, we have what is known as an architecture, a design for processing data. A neural network consists of three main components. There is an input layer, a hidden layer or layers, and an output layer. The input layer reads an input set of data. This can be an image, it can be a text, it can be anything that you want it to be. The image or text or whatever the input data is, is then passed to the hidden layer. The hidden layer consists of neurons. These are the dots in this map. These neurons perform some kind of algorithm or action upon the input data in order to understand what that input data is. The result of the hidden layer is then passed to the next layer. If we are dealing with a simple structure or architecture, that information is then going to be passed to the output layer. If, however, we're dealing with a more complex neural network, then the data is going to be passed to another hidden layer, which will then perform another set of tasks upon that data. The way in which we train a neural network is going to depend largely on the task at hand. There are three major types of learning that can occur. There is supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and semi-supervised learning. In this series, we're going to be focusing on supervised learning. I'm going to deal with the other two in a later video. Supervised learning is the process by which we give a neural network an input piece of data that has a corresponding label to it. So if we're dealing with texts and we're trying to pass in a text that is Oscar Wilde, we will assign a numerical value to every single piece of text that is Oscar Wilde, say a zero. If, however, we are giving it an input layer that is not Oscar Wilde, so say Dan Brown, we can give it a numerical label, say one. What the neural network is then going to try to do is to figure out how that input data that is labeled as Oscar Wilde is, in fact, Oscar Wilde. And if that input data is Dan Brown, it's trying to figure out how, in fact, that input data is Dan Brown. In other words, it's trying to recreate what we do as humans. Were any of us to read Oscar Wilde or read Dan Brown, we may be able to easily identify which author is which. Teaching a computer to do this is not so simple. During the process of learning, the computer is going to go through and adjust the weights or the calculations in the hidden layer as it analyzes and learns. 
And what these weights are doing is it's adjusting the way in which it's processing the data mathematically so that it can get closer and closer to an accurate label. In other words, by iterating across a whole bunch of data many, many times, the neural network is able to mathematically adjust its algorithms so that it can in turn learn what Dan Brown looks like and what Oscar Wilde looks like. So how does it do this? Well, it doesn't matter if the neural network is working with textual data or image data. It cannot process either one of these things efficiently or well. Most importantly, it can't run mathematical equations on text, and it certainly can't run mathematical equations on images. In order to achieve those tasks, it has to convert everything, all data, to numerical data. So every word, for example, in a text might receive a unique number. Every pixel in a image might receive a unique number. And when it analyzes all of these things collectively, it's able to adjust its weights, adjust its algorithms, and get closer to identifying what a certain piece of text or image might actually be. And all of this occurs in the hidden layers so that after it's processed and analyzed the information, it can output a result. This is best demonstrated by a handy little GIF that I found. Now, let's look at what's happening here. There is an input of the number nine. Now, all of us who are watching this video can probably understand that this is in fact a nine. A computer doesn't know that yet. Instead, we have to teach it to recognize a nine. So how does it do that? Well, it receives the input, so the image of a nine. It then passes that image through the input layer to the hidden layer. It then passes that information that it's processed to the next hidden layer, which then passes it to an output that assigns the number nine to it. At each of those stages, the weights are being adjusted, which are demonstrated by the lines, which in turn are adjusting its calculations so that it can analyze that picture and tell you what it actually is. All of this might seem like magic, and it might seem like it requires a complex understanding of mathematics. In truth, it doesn't. And that's thanks to two recent additions to computational software, and that's TensorFlow and Keras. TensorFlow and Keras allow for us to easily create and train neural networks without a large understanding of the mathematics behind them. This means that we as humanists do not need a computer science or a mathematical background to create and implement neural networks. We can create various and complex types of neural networks to achieve very high-end tasks in a very small amount of code. And all it takes is a basic understanding of Python to really do this. In this series, I'm going to walk you through all the different complex concepts behind a neural network. I'm going to walk you through all of the key terminology of a neural network, and I'm going to show you how to create a neural network using Keras and TensorFlow so that you can achieve high-end tasks and perform complex tasks very easily on both textual and image-based data.